It's been traditional in Kansas for the Chief Justice of the Kansas Supreme Court to address a joint session of the legislature in making the annual State of the Judiciary speech. But not this year. Justice Lawton Nuss has been rebuffed and told by the Speaker of the House there's simply no time for him to make any remarks and instead to put his words in writing. The turn of events has been viewed as a major slight of the judiciary by the conservative tilting legislature, which is expected to take up within weeks a bill to change the way higher court justices are selected. The move would reverse a decades-old nominating system in favor of one in which the governor would get to handpick a candidate and then have his choice confirmed by the Senate. Can anyone around this table tell me what is behind this tension? How about juvenile? I mean, oh. at least... I, I didn't see not, that in my notes, but thank you, Mary. No, well, not letting him speak. I mean, come on. Everybody knows that there is there is this huge tension behind dealing with, you know, the whole terms activist judges and that they want to change the whole system, which you can always look at the systems of how judges are put into place. But to not let him even speak, it's like, come on, grow up. Do, deal with the other issues. Yes in a more, you know, mature but the, but the House Speaker, Ray Merrick, who's from the Kansas City area, said that lawmakers had come to him and said that the, 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 the speech was very boring over the years. It was well, a waste a of lot time. Of, there's no, a lot of boring want, things in the Kansas to legislature. Most of the judiciary is boring. 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 Yeah. Right. Nick, there Steve. is a lot of tension uh, <laughs> yeah. between the judiciary in Kansas and lawmakers. I mean, it goes back to 2005 when the state Supreme Court ordered the spending of tens of millions of dollars on the school funding formula. Uh, lawmakers thought that was a direct imposition on the work that they do as activist judges. Just a year ago, there was a budget fight uh, with the courts and its budget. The courts shut down for a day in a very dramatic gesture of sort of protest against what the legislature was doing. The legislature didn't take very kindly to that either. And now we have this fight over how judges are picked. You can only begin to see here what's going on. A lot of tension in Kansas overall. And so the, the plan is to allow the governor then, in just like the federal system, where the president gets to pick the person he wants to be a Supreme Court justice, and then the Senate pick, and then the Senate confirms that person. What is wrong uh, then in a system in Kansas, then Sam Zeff, where the governor would get to pick who the uh, the judge on a court of appeals or the Supreme Court, and then the Senate would confirm that person? If it's good at the federal level, what's wrong at the state level? Well, opponents would say that uh, there's practical politics uh, involved. That in fact, Governor Brownback just wants to get his people on the Court of Appeals, uh, on the Supreme Court, a little bit harder to do, and that the Senate, as opposed to advising and consenting, would just be rubber stamping. Uh, and that's what opponents fear, is that this is a power grab uh, by Governor Brownback to control the appeals court in Kansas, ultimately uh, because of school, uh, because of school funding, uh, and if I can just just another second, this legislation is on a rocket sled. Uh, there's already a bill uh, pre-filed yesterday. Senator Jeff King from Independence, and they've modified their proposal a little bit. Uh, the original legislation last year, which died in the Senate, said governor uh, appoints, the Senate uh, would then confirm. This bill in the Senate would give you sort of a middle ground. So the governor would uh, make his appointment. It would go to a committee that uh, had various appointments on it. They would vet it in some way which is not specified. Then it would go to the Senate. Uh, where they would confirm. So it looks like they're trying to put a little political cover in this uh, between, uh, between the governor and the uh, conservative uh, Republican Senate in Kansas. Okay. So, but this, this, you said this is on a, a rocket sled, so this is moving very, very quickly. Would these changes, though, require, though, a vote of the people, or could the legislature unilaterally decide this and the voters would be kept out of the equation altogether? You can Steve? change the, the, the selection formula for the appellate court, Nick, just through a state law. With the state Supreme Court, it would require a constitutional amendment and people voting. Okay. But is this, as, as Sam suggested, Dave Helling, really about education? Yes, yes. Ultimately, it's about the, the case that Steve referred to back in 2005, where the court, in essence, really uh, increased funding for schools. Sam Brownback's budget will not work unless he can get a, a compliant court system to agree with the cuts that almost certainly are going to come. That may be some of the impetus and some of the movement behind it, but it's about every other sort of case that they want to, abortion, too. many other yes. issues, this redoing Missouri's of the appellate court. So this is one of those Absolutely. other issues yeah. we'll be continuing to follow yes. right here on Kansas. <laughs>